Broadcasting to you on WNN 1470 AM and TrentoVision.tv from the world's leading think tank laboratory, buried deep in an undisclosed building in hostile territory where evil and corruption is exposed. You're about to enter the Tom Trento Show. United West, a group that says it defends Western civilization against the onslaught of Islam. And today, uh, today we are going to do something a little different. Come, come on in here with me. Come on in here with me, all of you uh, driving in your automobiles on the 19th of September, and all of you folks watching at home or on your iPads, your iPhones, or if you're listening on iHeartRadio, or if you're over there at uh, TeaPartyCommunity.com, if you're there, I'd like you to come in a little closer and uh, help, me, help me put together the, uh, the story, sort of the plot, the storyline for a really, really bad Hollywood, like, B kind of movie. You know, just these crazy se sort of semi-horror, goofy movies. Yeah, let's let's start with um, a chicken sandwich, a, uh, a bunch of Christians, um, throw some some gays in there, and uh, how about a little terrorism, and uh, let's see a hero. Let's throw a hero in there in our in our storyline, our developing our plot line. All we need is a slime bag, evil. Uh, what would we call them? Uh, you know, the, the, e the evil culprit is all we need for our show. Oh, wait a minute. This is real life today, folks. And uh, we have a unique development on the 19th of September where all of these interesting creative B-movie plot lines have come together in Washington, D.C. in a very tragic uh, sense. But um, over the past year and a half, these various elements... Uh, a gay activist, a Christian community, domestic terrorism, chicken sandwiches, and the evil, um, what am I talking about? The evil, the evil bad guy. What do you call him? The evil... Uh, the villain. The, the villain. That's the word I was looking for. The villain. And today we're going to focus, we're going to tell you this story. We're going to scope it out. It's a very interesting story. Fascinating story. And not, don't forget hate group there, Tom, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got hate in there. We got everything. But the villain... The takeaway today, folks, is the villain of this story. And in that there are two villains, we want to focus on the primary villain because we want to go on record today to say that there is a villainous organization called the Southern Poverty Law Center that because of what it legally does, it legally, um, in, in a, uh, not even surreptitiously, in an overtly legal manner, you know what it's like? It reminds me of the, uh, the shell games where you have the three shells and the one little peanut and the shuckster at the carnival is moving the shells and you, you go, where's that peanut under that shell? The organization in question, the Southern Poverty Law Center, they are the flim flam shucksters that are running a shell game called hate groups and, um, and they are creating a perception in the public eye that indeed, because they say a group is a hate group, that group is indeed a hate group, whatever the heck that is, that through this careless and, um, and dangerous, as we know now, practice simply to extort money from their constituents. The Southern Poverty Law Center has blood on its hands and the courts today have validated that with a conviction and the sentencing of Floyd Lee Corkins II. He's you're seeing him right here if you're watching at home on Trento Vision, the United Western Tea Party community. If you're driving in your car, there's a picture of, uh, I think he's 30-year-old Floyd Lee Corkins II. He was sentenced. He was actually convicted a few months back. He was sentenced today in Washington, D.C., for domestic terrorism. And 
If you've been following the show, you know the story quite well. August 15th, last year, 2012, Floyd Lee Corkins walked into Family Research Council. There's the Christians. Floyd Lee Corkins is a gay homosexual activist. So the gay homosexual activist walked into Family Research Council Christian Ministry in Washington, D.C. He had 15 bags of chicken sandwiches from Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches. And he had a map on his person. There he is walking on the video on the screen, walking into Family Research, uh, Family Research Center. He's talking to the hero, uh, Leo the hero right there. And Leo, who was the, um, we're watching it on the screen, Leo was the um, man at the desk. He sees Floyd Lee Corkins reaching down. Leo gets up. I'm, I'm narrating this. Boom, Boom. one shot. Uh, Floyd Lee Corkins shoots to kill Leo, Leo Johnson. There's a they, struggle. They're struggling, fighting in the lobby if you're watching it on your screen. Two more shots. Bang, bang. Two more shots, three in total. I personally was in that lobby, saw the bullet holes. I saw the bullet that had the, the bullet damage that had gone through Leo Johnson's arm, devastated his arm. Leo now is holding Floyd Lee Corkins on the ground. August 15, 2012, a domestic terrorist, Floyd Lee Corkins II, attacks Family Research Council with over 100 rounds and 15 oh, sandwiches geez, that he was going to, Chick fil A sandwiches. He was going to lay behind each of the dead bodies, at least 15, that he was going to kill because as a homosexual, he took offense to the uh, position that Family Research Council had, which was they weren't for gay marriages. But he didn't know anything about Family Research Center, um, but he did some research on his own, went online, and looked at um, the Southern Poverty Law Center, looked up gay hate groups, found on the Southern Poverty Law Center's website um, gay hate groups, groups that the Southern Poverty Law Center, who are leftist homosexuals, many of them, right. in and of their own right, they have identified anyone who doesn't agree with their particular position as haters. You see the flim-flam shell game going on here, folks? Uh, the... the um, the Southern Poverty Law Center is made up of leftist, doctrinaire Marxists, many of whom are homosexuals. And if you take a position contrary to their moral or philosophical position, if you maintain that marriage is a unique relationship between a man and a woman uh, graced by God, and, um, and you take a, a position opposite marriage of the same sexes, you don't have a legitimate cultural or moral difference with the Southern Poverty Law Center. You are identified as a hate group. Now, once you reach the classification, and before the end of this show, we are going to go through the, the criterion that the Southern Poverty Law Center uses to establish the objective tri cri criterion. And don't let me laugh when I say objective. Or lack what? thereof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A what, Tom? Yeah, don't let me laugh when I say objective criterion. We're going to show you the completely subjective, absurd criterion that the Southern Poverty Law Center uses to identify and categorize a hate group. Once they do that, they promote the fact that this organization is a hate group, thereby directing fire, intellectual media fire at the various hate groups they designated, and in fact, mobilizing and, and motivating uh, improperly and unfactually, individuals like Floyd Lee Corkins the second. Now, we maintain, the United West, that Floyd Lee Corkins is completely and solely responsible for his actions. But that does not dismiss the responsibility that an organization that lies and distorts reality. You see, if you, if you do what we do, we identify terrorists and terrorist organizations factually, these are bad groups. And we're saying they're bad groups for these factual reasons. We have obviously philosophical political differences, but we're evaluating them on, on terrorist criteria that's objective and sound. Conversely, the Southern Poverty Law Center just rejects the objective, validated criterion, has an emotional and subjective position 
Therefore, because they lie at the premise of the basis of establishing a hate group, there is uh, moral culpability on their part in the story we're going about to tell you. Yeah, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I like to use the, uh, the Supreme Court. Everybody uses the thing, fire in a crowded theater. Yeah, and don't yell. <laughs> it's you know, Free speech is, is unlimited, except in the sense that you're not allowed to yell fire in a crowded theater. Or well, direct you, incitement to violence. Or direct incitement to violence, right. okay? That is true if there is no fire in a theater. Right. If there is a fire in a theater, you're allowed to yell fire, which we do. We in do. fact, you would be negligent if you if didn't. If you did not. If you did not yell fire, if there is a fire in a theater. Good point. Just sketch How, it out. However, okay. on the hate group map listing by the Southern Poverty Law Center, they are yelling fire in a crowded theater. Very good point. Where there is no fire. That is the difference. That you, is the primary difference. Can you find a picture of a fire in a theater, in a crowded theater? I think that would be good. That's a, that's a great illustration, folks. At 12 minutes after 5 o'clock on the 19th Wednesday, this is a wonderful illustration that Mark just came up with that uh, makes the distinction between when the United West or one of our counter-jihad groups looks at Al-Qaeda or uh, Al-Shabaab or the Muslim Brotherhood, right. and we say, all right, we're saying they're a terrorist organization for these objective reasons. In fact, folks, the theater is on fire and you need to do something about it. And there is really a fire. Conversely, when the Southern Poverty Law Center, because they're a bunch of homosexuals and leftists and don't like the folks, moral Christians at Family Research Council, when they say, we've fooled the world for 50 years, they being the Southern Poverty Law Center, we got the flim-flam game going on, let's, let's construct another enemy, we'll use the identification of another hate group to raise money from our constituents, we will present to the public this hate group, in this case, the F Family Research Council, and uh, we'll, we'll get their ire, and, and when they get mad at us, we'll use what they've written about us, we being the Southern Poverty Law Center, to raise more money from our constituents. Sounds like a money-raising operation. It's a flim-flam game is what it is. Tom. Anybody have any idea v visually? Don't, I don't want to say it audibly. Uh, visually? Can we show the folks visually how much money the little Southern Poverty I think it was 200 Center. No, I don't want to say the word. We can pull it up from their website and show the number. It's on their website. They have it on their, um, their uh, documents. Uh, they have their tax returns filed. And on one of them, if you can find it, if we can't find it, we'll say it. Or you know what? I'll draw the number. Um, you know what I need? I need some of my... Uh, markers and pa I got it right here live and in color if I can reach over here I got a marker ah, perfect um, it sounds to me folks like the Southern Poverty Law Center has a flim flam money making machine going on and they just have to regularly identify and the the more um, the more valid an organization is Ironically, in this upside-down world, and the Family Research Council, headed by Tony Perkins and, and General Jerry Boykin, the Family Research Council is one of the most valid, legitimate, conservative, family-oriented, Christian organizations on the face of the earth for the constituents, the leftist, morally bankrupt, um, uh, doctrinaire Marxist, uh, it, it fully integrated homosexual, pink, code pink, all of that. I mean, the dredges of the left comprise the, uh, the essence of the Southern Poverty Law Center. When they can, when they, the Southern Poverty Law Center, I want to make this point very clearly, when they can identify and construct a, uh, a straw man hate group like the Family Research Council, well, the, the brighter the light of the Family Research Council shines, for the constituents and the supporters and the members of the, of the, the Southern Poverty Law Center, it's more horrendous because that, that bright light blinds those who are dark. And in that darkness, they raise money and they raise money and they raise money. When I say to you out there on WNN 1470 or TrentoVision.tv or TeaPartyCommunity.com or TheUnitedWest.org or on iHeartRadio, 
When I say to you, at 16 minutes past 5 o'clock on the 19th of September, Southern Poverty Law Center. The key word being poverty. You envision probably sort of a, a, a wooden, wood-framed little building, you know, kind of the, uh, tilted to the leeward side. And, um, and um, oh, there it is. <laughs> There's the building on our screen. Friggin' thing looks like the... Uh, Starship Enterprise. It does. It looks like the Starship. What a beautiful building. Multi, multi-million dollar building. And I think it's in Memphis they are. Um, our guys are pulling up their latest tax return. Yeah. When we revealed to you the, the, the amount of money that the Southern... Folks, follow the money. The amount of money the Southern Poverty Law Center is sitting on. You're going to go, oh, my word. Oh, my word. This is a money-making flim-flam machine. Well, here's why. They have now been indicted, and, and they ought to be indicted by the we the people. They've been indicted in a uh, culpable sense, morally culpable, because today Floyd Lee Corkins II uh, was sentenced. Do we have any of the pictures of the yeah. folks at his sentencing? Well, so those were all outside pictures, but yeah, give me one second. Okay, you're going to pull those up. I'm going to read a quick story here to give our viewers and, and listeners the context to what we're talking about today. August 15th, last year, 2012, homosexual activist Floyd Lee Corkins the second, goes into Family Research Council with a gun, uh, 9 millimeter, 100 rounds, 15 Chick-fil-A sandwiches, and he wanted to kill as many Christians as he could because the Christians worked for Family Research Council, which stood firmly on the position that marriage is between a man and a woman. And for that belief that Floyd Lee Corkins found in the Southern Poverty Law Center, for the belief of men and women who hold to a union between a man and a woman as a legitimate marriage, Floyd Lee Corkins, directed by the material written in the in, uh, Southern Poverty Law Center and directed by a map posted on the website <clears throat> of Southern Poverty Law Center directing people to Family Research Council, Floyd Lee Corkins took his gun and his chicken sandwiches and set out on the 15th of August to kill at least 15 Christians. Do you know how far Family Research Council is from the Navy, uh, the Navy boat yards. Not no. very far. How far is Just it? a few miles. Okay. And earlier this week, earlier this week, we had a, a very similar event that did not have a hero, Leo Johnson, intersect the shooter, Alexis, whatever the guy's name is, the shooter at the Navy um, uh, boat yard earlier this week, and uh, 12, I believe it was 12 people killed um, savagely and tragically. The similarity between these two cases is frightening to say the least. It's one of these but-for cases, folks. Um, but for Leo Johnson, and if we can put the picture of Leo Johnson up, he is not a security guard. He was simply the, the uh, building manager sitting at the reception area there's Leo Johnson on the left, Tony Perkins on the right of your screen. Tony Perkins is the president of the Family Research Council. And um, uh, earlier this week, earlier this week, um, the shooter, uh, Alexis, what's Alexis's last name? Anybody know the, uh, the shooter of the Navy boat yard there? I can't remember. In D.C.? Uh, he took a couple of we weapons. You know, Alexis Dirtbag. Yeah, Alexis Dirtbag. Um, he took a couple of weapons, went in, and um, pulled a fire alarm so that everyone would run into the courtyard. As they were running out, he shot them. You talk about you know yelling fire yeah. metaphorically. Um, but uh, but um, Floyd Lee Corkins was stopped that day by Leo the Hero, Leo Johnson, who's on your screen right now. And um, uh, uh, folks in the Southern Poverty Law Center is the one of our focus uh, in today's show. And, and something reminds me here. We, we, speaking of the Southern Poverty, we have the poverty figures. For oh, you have that? All right, hang on to that. We're going to reveal that shortly. <laughs> so uh, there, uh, I have a little uneasiness right now. 
Um, Floyd Lee Corkins, I'm going to call him Corkins. I'm going to go through all his name. Corkins um, intended on killing at least, at least 15 people. And, um, and he had 100 rounds. Uh, the 15 sandwiches were the first 15 people. He wanted to kill 100 people. There's about 70 that worked there. And, and Corkins did not go into a, on a military base. The Navy Yard has a military um, component to it. Uh, with, with military members running all around. He went to a Christian ministry where there's right. young women and young men as interns. Yeah. Um, there are no armed guards. There are no armed people. These are, here's a picture right now, the FBI on that day, August 15, 2012, in front of the Family Research Council. So Corkins picked a soft target, very soft target. Sadly, Alexis Dirtbag also picked a soft target because through uh, our various administrations, they have banned the military from carrying weapons <laughs> on bases, which is absurd, as we're seeing more and more. But the thing that bothers me about this is, um, uh, is the, the, the shooting in, in the Navy boatyard got tremendous coverage worldwide, and people did die, obviously, and the, co the coverage was justified, to say the least. Um, this shooting, August 15th, which could have been as bad, did not receive... Aaron Alexis. Aaron Alexis? Yeah. Aaron Alexis. I like we, shouldn't, dirt bag. Yeah, we shouldn't even mention his name on air after today, actually. Yeah, yeah actually, Dirtbag. <laughs> what was that? Uh, that was a, uh, a gremlin. A-hole. A A-hole. <laughs> A-A. Um, uh, uh, Alexis. The, um, the coverage when Corkins went into the soft target to shoot Christians, when the, when the gay activists went in to shoot uh, soft target Christians, there was very, very little coverage of this. And it's very sad that the media, who has their bias... Because uh, they were Christians. That's yeah. why they didn't cover it. If you poll the media and say, philosophically and politically, where do you lean? Southern Poverty Law Center or Family Research Council? 99 out of 100 are going to lean that way. So as we learned this week, folks, critiquing the Sarasota Herald Tribune that skewed a story about us and then confronting them, their ideology drives their narrative, their, their news gathering, and so does the, the mainstream media. And it's to their discredit, and all of you listening journalists, to your discredit, you did not follow this story, the homosexual attack against the Christian ministry and the first conviction of a domestic terrorist um, in Washington, D.C., and the conviction was a few months ago. The sentencing was today. Today, um, Corkin's lawyer was arguing for 11 and a half years. Prosecution argued for 45 out of a possible 70. Guess what he got, guys? Hopefully a lot. How much did he get? He got 25 years. 25 years. Uh, I'm going to read this story by Associated Press. A man who planned a mass shooting is that the, yeah uh, I'm on the Associated Press. I'm in Washington Times. Okay, a man a man who planned a mass shooting at the headquarters of a conservative Christian lobbying group in Washington last year. To call them a conservative Christian lobbying group shows the skewing of the Associated Press. Uh, they are a ministry that that does teaching and, and communications and videos and written materials. They have a little tiny portion that does lobbying on the Hill, but they're a Christian ministry, basically. Um, uh, a man who was planning a mass shooting at the headquarters of a conservative Christian lobbying group in Washington <clears throat> was sentenced Thursday today to 25 years in prison for the plot that injured a security guard. Uh, no talk about a massacre and all of that. Floyd Corkins II was carrying 15 Chick-fil-A sandwiches and nearly 100 rounds of ammunition uh, taken into the Family Research Council. Little, later told authorities he planned to kill as many people as possible and to smear the sandwiches in his victims' faces as a political statement. What's the political statement? Don't hate gays. Don't hate gays. Yeah, the, <laughs> well, there's even another little angle that I didn't bring in. Um, during that whole brouhaha last summer about gay marriage and all of that, uh, the owners of Chick-fil-A 
It's a privately held company, one of the largest fast food chains in, in the world, privately held. The owners, who run a phenomenal company, it's closed on Sundays out of respect to their, their religion and to others, and um, uh, they, they run their, their uh, thousands of restaurants exactly by the, uh, the federal rules, the EOC rules, all of the labor laws, all of that. They don't discriminate. They don't have discrimination cases. They, they've never discriminated against a, a minority or sexually or anything. They discriminate um, against cows. Uh, yes, they do. <laughs> they discriminate right. against they do cows. They discriminate against cows. But the owner, one of the owners, came out personally against gay marriage. Right. He said, that's not for me. I don't believe in that stuff. I believe in God. I believe God has given a man and a woman for a beautiful union. Hateful. That's his view. Right. The Hateful. owner's view. In large well, there was a dust-up like you could. Remember all the people Lines. standing in line? For Chick-fil-A well, sandwiches and everything. They had the boycott yep. that was barely noticed. And then uh, a couple of, I think several of them were Tea Party groups and other Christian groups got together and said, oh, yeah, well, let's have Chick-fil-A day. And the lines and people in order to to. I don't know stay, if his mic is on. Uh, people, in order to stay uh, in cons yeah. in uh, you know in all, in lockstep with Chick Fil A, were waiting two, three, three and a half hours to get a sandwich. It was, it, it was the boycott was a blip. It was probably less than one percent effect on uh, on sales. And their day, I talked to a couple people. They actually hired ex or um, uh, had extra Additional shifts help. on. To handle it, and let me tell you something. I I know people that made new friends on those lines because they were like-minded people that uh, you know just believed in general Judeo-Christian principles, and they're still friends today from meeting online at the Chick-fil-A day. So it was a great day for Chick-fil-A. It reminds me of this million Muslim march where there was eleven yes, Muslims yes. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that was eight hundred thousand motorcycles. Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, folks. Take note, please. There is a sleeping giant of conservatives out there that are going about their everyday business. Leftists, Mr. Obama, you keep pissing them off. We're going to rise up, and it ain't going to be pretty, okay? It ain't going to be pretty. And we, we fight within the bounds of the law. So it reminds me of the 11 Muslims that went to the Million Muslim March and, and 800,000 motorcycles. 20, no, 25,000 25, motorcycles. Well, I heard 800,000. No, 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 it wasn't no, that. No, no. 20, it was 20,000. I thought it was, you say 25, I thought they were counting 20,000. 20, 20 25,000. Okay. That's, Versus 20 to 25 Muslims. Uh, yeah, 1,000 yeah. per. per um, Tom, uh, let yeah. me ask you do you think 1,000 bikers could take a Muslim? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but but the Chick Fil A sandwiches that Corkins was carrying right. was symbolic. He says right here, he was going to rub the sandwiches in his victims' faces as a uh, political statement. statement right. Chick Fil A was making the headlines at the time because its president was opposed to gay marriage. But none of this caught the mainstream media's attention for some reason. It was a story here, story okay. there, but nobody said no, hey, it was a systemic hour, problem. Yeah. Here's the systemic problem: we have an aggressive. Gay community. Now, those of us who are conservatives, though morally we may disagree with what's going on in a particular bedroom, understanding constitutionally that's the privacy of someone's home. They can do whatever they want. Right. Right. Um, but a as a conservative Christian, you know, and I could argue this all day long, gay marriage is nonsense. It's silly, number one. And most conservatives I, I, I know that I know are supportive of gay unions. It's just that the idea of marriage, why do you have to have the marriage? I mean, it, it's well, not sanctioned it, by, you know, Christianity. It's not sanctioned by any of that. I, so I don't want to get, into, get into that argument. I don't want to get into that debate t yet, but what I'm saying is this. Um, but that's the debate we have. We, we, the conservative Christian movement, aren't going to go around beating up gay people or wanting to kill gay people or anything like that. It's an ideological argument. If you lose at the ballot box, then you right. have to do more education and teach people that this is wrong. We don't, we don't you know, laws, laws are necessary, but if you can change a person's heart to follow the mm -hmm. laws of God, right. then you don't need the external law. So that's the way Christians work. And I want to go on this, record this stating... Is, 
I want to go on record stating, if you are out there beating up gays for any reason, that's abhorrent. That's you crazy. Sh- and you should be convicted and sentenced like Floyd Lee Kirk. And, and the same goes or- for beating up Muslims. Yes. yes. We do not encourage any violence towards anyone on this program or in this organization. Right. No, the only violence we would occur is SEAL Team 6 to do a number on Al-Qaeda's head. Right. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll encourage that violence all day long. But um, as, as Christians, Jews, and, uh, Unitarians. and Unitarians, and Unicorns, and whatever else we got <laughs> here at the United West Trento Vision, um, you, you see, when you, when you, when you accelerate to, to the kinetic end, when you accelerate physically, you abandon the high moral ground you have, and you abandon the beautiful position of the rule of law in a society. You never want that to break down. So there ought never to be a jump to... Um, physically solving a problem when we can culturally solve the problem here. No beating up gays, no beating up Muslims, no attacking, none of that stuff. Can That's I beat up a Jew? <laughs> In your case, uh, Imam Abdullah maybe will let you do that. But the systemic problem that the press should have recognized August 16th, 2012, right. was a, a, the development, the identification of a very aggressive gay movement in this country. We are seeing that now. So somebody should say, whoa, you know, I wonder if the gay movement is classified as a hate group by the SPLC. Uh, <laughs> not. No, probably not. That's one systemic problem. The other is the press should have gone and investigated the Southern Poverty Law Center where Corkin said, that's where I learned about this group, how bad they are. Right. That's where I got my map. That's where I got my motivation. So... Thank you, Southern Poverty Law Center, Corkin speaking, to find who I'm going to shoot and kill and rub Chick-fil-A. And give you directions on map of who to go shoot and kill right there. Right on our screen right now, you got a directions to uh, how you can go find your, the hate group of your choice. But the press should have, and this is a, a challenge for the uh, what we'll call the mainstream press or anybody that's a legitimate journalist, go check out the Southern Poverty Law Center and just this week, the United West, I spoke a week ago this past Wednesday, 9-11 in Venice, Florida, and I, um, I proclaimed publicly that, uh, uh, that the, the problem, the enemy we're fighting in our cultural battle right now is Islam. And I didn't qualify it with moderate Islam or radical Islam. I said the, the system of Islam, and it's primarily a political system with a religious veneer, that in and of itself is a failed system, particularly on the political end, and the failure of it has resulted in death and destruction worldwide for 1,400 years. Those were my very controversial statements. And uh, the you newspaper, hater you, you yeah, hater you. The writer of the newspaper, Shelby Webb, um, went to the SPLC Southern Poverty Law Center to get a quote from Mark, Mark Potok. The main, Potok. Mark the main Potok. Um, we may have a nice picture of Mark uh, before he applies his um, brill cream in the morning. Uh, Mark Potok is uh, one of the lead, one of the leaders of the Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, I would, I would like to get involved in a debate with one or two of these guys, but um, he went on record as saying our organization, the United West, and I'm paraphrasing, and I'm going to paraphrase less egregiously than he did. Uh, out of the thousands of hate groups, we are one of the most vile. Uh, Muslim bashing hate groups, you know, on the face of the earth, and um, by, <laughs> okay, anybody can say whatever they want. What is the objective criterion by which anybody can reach that conclusion? Well, this newspaper, Sarasota Herald Tribune, went ahead, copied his quote, and then that's been picked up all over the place, and uh, all the Muslim groups, and we know how the game is played. This is what you do, but what we're saying is somebody has to investigate the Southern. Poverty Law Center. Southern. Poverty. Oh. Southern. Oh, I found their. I found their. Oh, uh, you did. I did. The Southern Rich Law Center. The Southern. Well, they're. Tell us about it. Well, if you'll go to Net Two, there, Mike, and uh, what they did, they have six six million seven hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars. This is what year now? This is this year. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That's just cash on hand. That's just physical dollars in their hand. Oh, so cash on hand, six point seven million. And they have a oh, they have some U.S. bonds, you know, uh, for another seven million. And then they have U.S. equity funds, 
U.S. equity funds of $46 million. <laughs> they have non-U.S. equity funds of $37 million. What do you mean non-U.S.? What is that? Uh, foreign equity funds in foreign, foreign countries. you got to be kidding me. No. Okay. They have private equity funds of $17 million. They have real estate asset, as, asset funds of $15 million. They have marketable alternative, <laughs> marketable ar alternative funds, absolute return funds of $14 million. Arbitrage funds of $27 million. Long short funds of $35 million. Multi strategy funds of $39 million. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They got multi, multi strategy funds, $38 million. 39, nine, 39. $38,963,415. Right. So, what, what is our, uh, can you check our budget for our multi strategy funds? <laughs> I don't, uh, what do we well, have in we our account? Our multi-strategy fund account? Yes. Uh, our, um, uh, we don't have... Do we have over $25? Uh, we don't have a multi-strategy fund. we got $24.37. Our multi-strategy fund... they got $39 million. Okay, so what's the total? What's the total? Here we go. Total is... Total endowment fund assets. Now, this is liquid funds that they can get a hold of or through real estate. Two hundred and forty-five million, two hundred eighty thousand, four hundred seventy-six thousand, four hundred seventy-six dollars. So two hundred forty-five million, two hundred eighty thousand, four hundred seventy-six dollars. That, folks, simplifying it, one quarter of a billion dollars. You know, Tom, I've been wanting to talk to you about our arbitrage funds. It's a good time, <laughs> arbitrage funds account. Okay. You know, because you know, that's a little bit lacking. You know, I, I don't really don't see a, a high return rate of fund on our arbitrage fund our account. Arbitrage. So I want to I want to move that into our non-U.S. bond funds and maybe you know, you know, capitalize a little bit on the non-U.S. equity funds because Brazil's doing really hey, great. Hey Tom, this can I borrow a hundred bucks? <laughs> hey folks, we're we're dealing with a very serious issue today where a man is going to prison for 25 years because he followed the advice, the teaching the research and the direction of an organization that tells the U.S. government, and this is our primary argument today, an organization, the Southern Poverty Law Center, that works with the U.S. government as a professional expert, as a professional subject matter expert, Southern Poverty Law Center, Southern Poverty Law Center, as a professional subject matter expert, they tell the U.S. government who the hate groups are in the United States, right. and this administration laps it up like a hot dog on a hot day lapping up cold water, when in fact the Southern Poverty Law Center is sitting on a quarter of a billion dollars, and most of which right now, this individual on the screen, Mark Potak, is personally responsible for is he's been leading this organization with the original founder Mars Dees for many many years right these two gentlemen are flim flam artists um, are yeah. snake oil salesmen they laugh at people like us who who uh, throw um, spitballs at no. their massive m1 a1 tank they laugh all the way to the bank and where we need to make an impact is with the federal government. The federal government must view and recognize these people as, uh, as the slime, uh, flim-flam organization, money-making machine they are. They're not experts on hate groups by any way, shape, or form. They can't even define it. They can't define they it. They can't define it. And they're, this is just the beginning. Well, Today, with the sentencing of Corkins, well, it's just I, the I want beginning. To bring up hang yeah. on, hang on. It's just the beginning. Uh, go ahead. No, I, I want to bring up the point that on these funds where these donors are donating money, giving the Southern Poverty Law Center <laughs> money, what they're doing clearly by their – they're taking that money, investing it in treasury bonds, non-U.S. treasury bonds, equity funds, arbitrage funds, long-range short, short funds. You're just donating the money. They're not, they're, you're not donating money for them to do anything. You're donating the money to make money so they can make money. Yeah, what they'll do at some point is uh, dissolve the organization, and it's a, a 501c3, but they'll dissolve it in such a manner, um, from what I understand with c3s, you, you, you have to, uh, you can't, you're not, you're not supposed to personally take the money, though you can take a ton of money. If these two guys want to, 
they can give themselves the, the, the amount of money you can take in salary is contingent upon the amount of money you take in. They take in about $30 million a year. They could easily take a million or two million. Uh, if they want to tank this thing, like right. a five-year tank plan, they could say, hey, we're going to take two million a piece, just salary, for four or five, for four or five years. They can form a consulting firm, mm -hmm. uh, which they funnel 10, 15, 20 million dollars a year to their consulting firm to provide totally bogus right. white papers that right. their wives are or their girlfriends are writing. When you get 250 million dollars involved, yeah, that happens. So now they just funneled 20 million each out of to one consulting firm. Right, right. Which is these are not big numbers when you're dealing with Washington and all of that. Then they could have a couple of other little bogus companies that are all C three or C four companies. Right. They could funnel all C three companies funnel all this money, but they like the mafia. They're just getting a taste, a little right. percentage, mm -hmm. as this money, uh, this ocean of money flows by them. Right. At the end of the five years. They've each taken fifty million dollars personally out of this, right? And then they crash the whole thing. They give it away, mm -hmm. and they're gone. And they're gone. And, and the donors you know, are left there. But they've done it legitimately, illegally. These are right. smart people. The FBI, whom they are advising as to who hate groups are, ought to be investigating these guys for fraud. Well, can we go over how they actually determine a hate <sighs> group? You know what? First, before we move on, should we just show the video of Floyd Lee Corkins telling the FBI that he actually got picked them from their website? Do well, it. I mean, let's show it out of the do criminal's it. mouth. Uh, let's do it. This organization. Did you, did you, how did you Here we go. Did you like look it up online, or how did you know about the uh, Southern Poverty Law? Lists. Make it louder. Uh, Anti-gate groups. I found them online. Okay. okay. We're gonna play it again because I want to read it too. Like Play it's hard game. to understand. Yeah, it's I'll read game. it. Kill the audio. No, no, no. Go ahead and play it, and you can read it. If now, how did you this building, you can't win the over this organization? Did you, did you, how did you find it? Or did you like look it up online, or how did you know about the Southern Poverty Law lists uh, anti-gay groups? I found them online. Okay. I went to research on their website and stuff like that. Okay. Unbelievable. I went to the Southern Poverty of. This is Floyd Lee Kirkins. He says, I mainly determined my information on the Southern Poverty Law Center website. Yep. When I, I went online, I did research there. I found them. You know, the map was there, all of that. Now, that's all that the FBI released. Right. We don't know if they went into a very detail. Well, what did you find on the Southern Poverty Law Center? My guess is there's, there's much more than just this 19-second piece uh, because um, the FBI has done work with the Southern Poverty Law Center, as has other law enforcement agencies. And for them to um, indict themselves, you know, saying, oh, we turn to these guys as experts, and you're turning to these guys as you're targeting uh, experts, so be a little uncomfortable for the FBI. So they need to investigate. Now, how does, so, so the situation today, summing it up for the people just coming in the car at 43 minutes after five. Tom Trento here, WNN 1470, TrentoVision.tv, TeaPartyCommunity.com. Watch Steve Kane in the mornings and Brian Craig, 4 o'clock, just before our show. Holly Meredith. Today, Floyd Lee Corkins II got sentenced 25 years right. for busting into Family Research Council, attempting to kill every employee. Floyd Lee, uh, Floyd Lee Corkins, Leo Johnson, hero, hero Leo Johnson, Intercepted Corkins, unlike Alexis um, Aaron, who killed uh, earlier, not too far earlier this week in Washington, D.C., 12 people, and he got killed also. Um, our focus today is the illegitimacy of the Southern Poverty Law Center to serve as a subject matter expert to federal, state, or local law enforcement agencies based upon the fact that they are a flim-flam money-making machine and already we see the degradation and danger of their work, their false work, mobilizing people like Corkins to try to kill innocent human beings. What do you got, Tom? Mark? What, what's? Let me ask you something. What is to keep uh, uh, a Muslim? Because not you know, obviously Muslims around the world are known to kill people that insult them. I, uh, by placing by, you, by placing you on that hate list, they have placed you in danger. Yeah, they're, they're, no, they're, they're, no they're, different than uh, the FRC. 
I carry this secret weapon right here. The a pen. Sharpie. You're right. I will put a mustache on them if they come near me. No, I, I you know, I, um, I have never thought of that. That's an interesting well, question. Well, Mark Potox says, and we can put, put Mark Potox quote up on camera for Mike. Mark Potox says, a senior fellow with the Southern, Mark Potox, the senior fellow of the Southern Poverty Law Center, who's sitting on $250 million, <laughs> said, while thousands of groups in the United States are critical of Islam, few are as vicious in their criticism as the United West. They, quote, he says, they are a vicious, conspiracy-minded, Muslim-bashing group, says Potok. Now, come on back to Tom. You know, um, now, um, we got to go, let's go through the objective criteria which, which uh, the, the Southern Poverty Law Center claims on their website. Okay. They qualify on their website, they state that an anti-Muslim hate group is all anti-Muslim hate groups exhibit extreme hostility towards Muslims. That's their you first... Have, you have something to put up to show the viewers yeah. and the listeners? That, that that's, uh, that's what they, they, they claim the anti-Muslim hate group exhibit extreme hostility towards Muslims. That's right, their well, very let's first get one statement. thing at a time. So their objective criteria is um, anti-Muslim hate groups that they say we are. Right. Exhibit extreme hatred toward human hostility, beings, extreme uh, hostility towards says Muslims. Toward, toward Muslims. Muslims, not toward the ideology of Islam. No, towards Muslims. Towards Muslims. Okay, okay. I, I, you know, I mean. Well, what what do they mean by extreme hostility? To me, extreme hostility means throwing stones, stones killing them, stuff. killing people, torturing people, stuff like that. So right there, if we're supposed to be the creme de la creme, you know, the the top ten in the beauty pageant. You know, the Miss Ford or the Miss Georgia, if you will, of hate groups, okay? If you believe that we are that type of hate group, then we should have shown extreme hostility towards Muslims. And we, we have, should have killed Muslims, hung them, tortured them, burned them at the stake, or something like that. No, but you offend them. It's just as bad. No, you're making, you're making a very interesting, solid, logical counter-argument. Go ahead. All right. They said the next line I'm in tracking, the things I'm tracking. is Muslims are depicted as irrational, intolerant, and violent, and their faith is frequently depicted as sanctioning pedophilia, marital rape, and child marriage. Okay. Well, stating the facts that Islam does indeed sanction, you know, marital rape and child marriage, you know, that, that's is that really a hate? State those things again, because we have Muslim, been known. Muslims are depicted wait, as hang on, irrational. Hang on, hang on. We have been known, and we will be known, to critique a system of Islam that has these characteristics in it. State the characteristics again. They say Muslims. We didn't. They didn't say Islam. They say Muslims are depicted as irrational, intolerant, and violent, and their faith is frequently depicted as sanctioning pedophilia, mar marital rape, and child marriage. Now, the question, so if, if a group has that... Um, Distinct characteristic. If, if a group is demonstrating that, uh, that attitude toward Muslims, then that group is a hate group. That's yes. Then Muslims are a hate group also against Muslims. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If, if you want to go how that. stupid this becomes by there. I mean, this is really stupid. Mark really had you the know? best analogy of, of who could be considered a hate group. Well we'll, get, we'll, we'll get to that. You the know end. these guys, Morris Dees, the founder of Southern Poverty Law Center, Mark Potok, his dancing partner there, whatever. You know these guys, you know, when they're sailing on their ships and flying on their jets, uh, pounding their uh, Chevy's Regal. You know, you know, they say, this is all going to come to an end one day, man. Yeah, the, the, this, the, this Ponzi scheme. They're going to find us out. Well, let's just take this, ride this pony as far as we can. Okay, what's the next All right, objective the next criteria? Objective criteria. These groups also typically hold conspiratorial views regarding the inherent danger to America posed by Muslim American community. Muslims are depicted as a fifth column intent on undermining and eventually replacing the American democracy and Western civilization with Islamic despotism. Okay. Now... So by this classification, U.S. federal prosecutors, district court judges, appellate court judges who prosecuted and adjudicated the Holy Land Down Foundation trial would have to be classified as part of an anti-Muslim hate group. 
it, when Judge Solis cited the following. I read, read the criterion again for our All right. listeners and our viewers. This is what groups, we're doing, folks. At groups 50, that hold. Oh, wait, hang on. What we're doing, folks, at 50 minutes after 5 o'clock, we are critiquing the Southern Poverty Law Center's um, criterion. Man, manner by which they identify and classify. They are viewed as subject matter experts. In a particular area of subject matter, they are experts. They're viewed by that as the press in this country right. and by law enforcement and this administration. We're saying that's a, uh, not only an unhealthy, but an illegitimate way to perceive these people as subject matter experts, certainly on all the groups they list. They may be on one or two back in the 50s or 60s, but what has, ha what has, what has developed as a legitimate effort and the good work they did in the 50s and 60s, they discovered they can make a lot of money by every, every month or two coming up with a bogus hate group, then writing fundraising le letters against it, and they have this Ponzi scheme built on a, on a shifting the metaphors here, a house right. of cards, and, but they're still perceived as subject matter experts we are in the center of it because they identified as a, us as a Muslim hate group, which is absurd. But more importantly, today, Floyd Corkins got 25 years because he followed their advice, tried to kill 100 Christians at Family Research Council. Listen to the next criteria. Well, the, the, the criteria here was that they typically hold conspiratorial views. They being whom? Us. The, the Muslim hating group holds. Holds. Uh, conspiratorial views regarding the inherent danger to America posed by Muslims' American community. Muslims are depicted as a fifth column intent on undermining and eventually replacing American democracy and Western civilization with Islamic despotism. Now, by this definition, all right, Judge Solis and the appellate court judges and U.S. federal prosecutors and district court judges, where Judge Solis cited, says, the government has produced ample evidence to establish the associations of CARE, ISNA, and NATE, Council of American Islamic Relations, Islamic Society of North America, North American Islamic Trust, with the Holy Land Foundation, the Islamic Association of Palestine, a terrorist group, and with Hamas. He says they produced ample evidence to show this. So by that definition, this is great the, the, factually, yeah. the, then Judge Solis is a hate group. Well, Judge Solis is an individual who sits on a federal Well, bench. The, then the whole the federal, federal government, government is, is a hate, hate group. group because if, they're, it's, if it's maintained this uh, decision. That's right. If they maintain this decision because it's a conspiratorial view, no, they, shot, they had ample evidence shown to them and boom. And that's all we've been repeating. All right. This is a very important point, folks. And the, the big idea we want you to take away from the show today um, is uh, not only the, uh, the horrible situation that Leo Johnson is in, the hero that saved many, many lives at Family Research Council a year and a half ago, uh, going through multiple surgeries, he's got blood clotting problems, he's got physical disabilities. Um, just uh, pray for this wonderful Christian man, Leo Johnson. He and his family are going through much. He's, he's a hero who literally saved lives. Um, that's an important takeaway from today on our show. Also, and, and you know what this man had, the, 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 uh, this hater? Leo Johnson is a member of the hate group, Family Research Council, and they are a hate group designated by the Southern Poverty Law Center. And today, Leo Johnson was in court with Floyd Corkins, and Leo Johnson had a chance to speak to Leo, to uh, Floyd Corkins. You want to hear what he said? Yeah. Yeah. He said, um, he said, oh, don't keep moving on me, little picture. I hate when it does that. Oh. He said, uh, which kind of the case, maybe it was, what he said basically was, um, let me find it here. Oh, while you're doing that, yeah. I just want to tell you what the SPLC does not list as a hate or terror organization. What's that? Guess which one? Any Muslim group. Any Muslim group. Really? They don't even have a Muslim. No, know, the Nation of Islam. Nation, but it's not listed under Muslim. It's just a, under general hate. 
category. No, they're under black, black separatist. Separ black separatist. I'm sorry. Okay, they're listed under black separatist, but they're not, you know, American Islamic hate group. There's nothing in there. There's Al Qaeda is not listed. The Muslim Brotherhood is not listed. They don't even have a category. They don't have a category for Isla American Islamic hate group. There is not even a cat. They even mention Islam. Um, and I, oh, oh my God, is, you know, how come, come to net one, Mike. Here's hey. what Leo Johnson oh, said. I'm sorry, don't don't come to net. Here's one. what Leo Johnson said. Leo Johnson is the hero who got shot in his arm. Here's what he said to Floyd Corkins today in court. He said, um, uh, he said, I uh, I have no hatred toward you. I forgive you for what you've done to my life, destroying my life and, and my family's life. He said, he being the guy who got shot, who's a, who's a member of a so-called hate group, according to the SPLC, he said, on that day, God saved both of us. He saved me from being shot by you, and he saved Corkins from being shot by Leo, because Leo had wrestled the gun away, held the gun on him, yeah. and as Corkins was struggling, he was going to shoot him, and he literally heard God telling him, do not shoot him. So really? both were saved. That, that mm -hmm. is a member of a hate group, according right. to Southern Poverty Law Center. And Heidi Berrick, B-E-I-R-R-C-H, the SPLC's Director of Research and Special Projects and featured contributor to Hate Watch blog, which is their award-winning blog, which has no information on it. <laughs> Acc according, uh, acknowledging an email that to the Center of Immigration Studies in March 2010 say we do not have a formal written criteria when talking about how they determine what a hate group is she said you it's whatever we want it to be her direct quote is yeah. you qualify as a hate group if you treat an entire group of people for their internal characteristics or their inherent characteristics as less or you demean them in some way, Ooh. that that's your my 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 focus as a hate group. I'm thinking that's how you made it, Tom. J E T S Jets, Jets, J E T S Jets. That's right. You're a Dolphin fan, that's so right. you're a hater. Hey, hey. You're a Dolphin you're fan, a hater. according to that. that you're a hater. Hate, hater. Hey, um, well, on. hold on. See, this is sad. This is really, really sad. You know what? It, what it really reminds me of, Tom. You know those tarot readers? You go in those card readers, those palm readers you go into, and they throw out a general statement, and you fill in the blanks, just like I was reading before. Yep. Oh, Tom said something about Muslim, and he's a hate group. Oh, yes, yes, I know he is. It, it, it's you. You fill in the blanks. It's, I've it's heard, a terror scam. I've heard people recently discuss the United West as a hate group and how how uh, violent you are. I, I heard someone say the term violent. That we are violent. That, that we are violent. The United West and violent, okay? And there were some F-bombs thrown in around you as well. We are so public in what we do right. that our violence should be very obvious to everybody if we've ever done anything. And, we try and to there's always cameras around everywhere you go. You, you know what they perceive as being violent when you put a camera up yeah, <laughs> they're in a public place speaking. You put a camera up. Oh, they go, they go nuclear because because shooting the technically soft, because of the because of the soft headedness of the left. Right, they can't stand up. Uh, they can't stand under rigorous uh, questioning and evaluation. They view that as as violence and some physical violence if you intellectually challenge them. That's the way the world has come. You're so beating far. up their brains. Yeah. You're beating up their brains. Hey, hey, we're uh, supposed Morris, to die. Well, we got to say goodbye. Uh, Morris second. called. He wanted to know if you wanted to come over to Net One. Morris called. Yes. yes. Morris Dees. He called and he wanted to know if you wanted That's to come Morris sit Dees. around his pool for cigars later. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my Not God! Not bad. You see the guest house behind the house. That's oh just God. now. Now, uh, in his defense, he made a ton of money as a flim flam, um, a direct mail guy. He made millions before he started. Or snake time. oil. Uh, but these guys are going to burn this thing in a few years. They're going to take a hundred million dollars out of it, and uh, the FBI needs to investigate them. Leo Johnson, Family Research Council, you're all heroes in our book. Thanks for doing great work. Pray for Floyd Lee Corkins that he may find God in his uh, 25 years of, of uh, life inside a He'll prison. He'll have plenty of time to look for And him. SPLC, we ain't done with you yet. We'll be in touch.